Hi friends, welcome to Life on Summer Hill. Today we are going to work on three projects. The first one is I'm going to pull a paint color uh, and then have it matched at Sherwin-Williams. So I'm inviting you along to watch me do that because I need this paint color to do some touch up on a wall. And then second, I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to hang wreaths on mirrors. And then third, we're going to apply a German schmear technique to a beautiful um, pot or vase. Um, not sure what it's called, but I'm going to apply that to this beautiful urn and, um, and show you how to do that. And I actually shared that in my previous video on German schmear fireplaces. So I'll put a link in the description to that and let's get started. Okay, so to begin, find an inconspicuous place to cut a one inch by one inch square. So I'm doing this back in a corner by my bookcase. Um, that's the least noticeable spot in my living room, dining room area. Once you've scored that square with your X-Acto knife, then just grab a piece of the sheetrock layer and you can peel it off and you've got a sample to take to the paint store. Now, once you have made this pretty spot on your wall, uh, you basically take some spackle, and I like to use a jumbo popsicle stick, and you're going to put some spackle over that spot. And then I like to wipe the excess off, and then I use it to smooth it out. Okay, so we have a sample. Let's move over and I'll show you how to hang wreaths on mirrors and then we'll run to Sherwin-Williams and pick up our paint. Okay, on this side of the room, I took down what Christmas stuff I still had here that was really more wintry looking. Um, and I've been playing around with some arrangements and I really wanted a vintage looking pot without spending a really expensive price. So um, I'm gonna show you two ways you can hang your wreath on your mirror. And as you can see, I hang wreaths on this mirror a lot because this mirror is cracked. Um, so that kind of hides that until one day I take the time to fix it. <laughs> but, um, but I'm gonna show you how to hang this uh, wreath here that I got from one of my favorite wreath shops called The Whimsical Door. And then I have two different ways that I'm gonna do it or ha that I do it. Uh, I do a suction cup sometimes, and sometimes I do a command hook, which is this. This is a dollar store command hook. And then I thought you might like to see, this is a really big suction cup that I use when I do um, larger wreaths. Like you can tell this one's kind of dirty, so it hung on a window outside. But this one's really good for larger wreaths. But for this little guy, we're going to use a small um, command hook this time. So if you have anything on your mirror or if it hasn't been cleaned in a long time and you're using a suction cup, I would definitely um, clean it off. And mine hasn't been cleaned in a while, so I'm going to give it a little sure it's clean too um, but what I do is I I go <sighs> and 
it kind of creates like a little bit of a fog on there that helps it stick. So. Um, I hang Reese up here so much I know exactly where to do it, but if you don't know exactly where to hang yours, um, hold it up there first to get an idea of where you want it. And then just remember wherever that hook or vine or whatever you're using on the back, um, if it's towards the top, make sure the hook part is a, a look at where this hook is, not the center, but where the hook is. So. This one's ready. Okay, I'll show a close-up of this one. But it has a clear hook. I'm not sure if you can see it up in there. See, it's completely hidden. Okay, I'll try to see, but see, you can't even see it from the side. Maybe, I think you might can see it if I look way back there. But this is a great, a great one. And you can get, um, suction hooks on Amazon and other uh, websites. I think they even have them at the Dollar Tree. Now, how to use a command hook. And this is a command hook that I bought at the Dollar Tree. So I'll show you how to hang this one. So again, I know where my hook part sits and it sits about right here. So all I do is peel the back off, and, and um, 3M command hooks are different from this, so just read the directions on yours. Now with these command hooks, it says to let it sit for like 10 seconds um, or something like that. Again, read your directions. So we're gonna let this sit for a little bit and then we'll come back and hang the wreath. Okay, so from the side, you cannot see it. From the front, you cannot see it. Now this is a really full wreath. So it's a good wreath with this um, command hook piece. But now if I got way under it, can you see it? Yes, so you can see it under there. Okay, so if you have a really thin wreath, just know that you need a command hook that doesn't show um, a piece of white or something like that. Okay, so now that we finished hanging the wreath on the small mirror, let's go look at this wreath in my living room that's hanging on this bigger mirror that's on my mantle. Okay, so on this wreath up here, this mirror is just propped up against my fireplace. And all I used was some velvet ribbon. You can use any ribbon. And I basically just looped it through the wreath. So it's not, see how it's looped through the wreath. We'll pull it down so you can see it. back and as you can see I just used painters tape to attach it so here's the front so you can see um, it just comes over the top and loops through the wreath and then and I did this before I hung it so it's a lot easier to do it that way And that's it. So those are the um, three ways that I hang wreaths on mirrors. Uh, you can do this technique on any size mirror. Uh, you can do it with any size wreath. You can even, uh, if you have a really long mirror, you can even stack wreaths one on top of the other and then connect them with ribbon and then go over the wreath and attach it on the back. Okay, so now that you know how to do or how to hang wreaths on mirrors, let's head to Sherwin Williams and pick up some paint so we can paint that pot. <music> out of the sample ask, and they may have it in the store. They may have it down here. Okay, so I just came out of Sherwin Williams 
and I've got some really neat things to share with you all. So first of all, um, remember the, the little square, one inch by one inch square piece of sheetrock basically I pulled off the wall. Um, he said if you have a quarter size piece uh, in between a dime to a quarter size, they should be good to scan it if you need to match it. Now, I've had a lot of people ask me what color is my living room. And in my living room, I am almost 100% sure it's bone white because that's the color I painted it. I mean, it's probably been 20 years ago. But while I was at Sherwin-Williams, because I don't have a Benjamin Moore close to me, um, while I was at Sherwin-Williams, I had him match it. Um, well, not match it. I had him scan this and pull up a color. But then... He named it. He said, I can name it. So in the future, we can pull it up in the system. And I said, well, can you pull it up? And can anyone pull it up in the system? Like if somebody is in Georgia, can they pull it up in the system? And he said, yes, they should be able to. So here, if you want my living room paint color, it is Summer Hill, all one word, living room, all one word. So, Summer Hill Living Room. Summer Hill, one word, living room. <laughs> one word. If you cannot find it, tell them to contact the Sherwin Williams off of Cary Forest in Tallahassee, Florida, and they can pull it for them. So, the other thing I wanted to show you, and I'm going to show you more of this later, is if you go in and you pull all the samples from your house, so each room. And then, if you write on the back what room it's in, I'll show you how you can hole punch it and then use a ring clip to put those together. But the guy said that they have these. And this is a booklet that you can fill out that has information on what room, um, what the paint color is, all that. And then you can put your paint chips in this little slot right here. So here's another cool way you can keep track of your paint color. So, and, and you can put this in your, fi in your file cabinet, but if you want to carry your paint colors in your purse, um, then I'm gonna show you this other way to do it. So let's head back home. I've got my sample that I was telling y'all about. We're gonna see how well this matched up with the wall. Let's start working on this pot. Isn't that kind of cool, like the texture? And I thought the handles were cute. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a sanding block and I'm just gonna kind of rough it up because it is really slick. And that is not going to rough it up. So let's go get another sanding block. Okay, <laughs> now I got a rough sanding block. So we're going to just rough it up and try to, because it, it's so slick that the paint might come off. So we're just going to rough it up. Here's warm stone. And I got a regular size paintbrush because I want to get this done quickly. dry for about an hour. I want it to dry really good and we'll come back and see how well the paint is sticking. And if it's sticking real good, we'll move on to the German schmear part of the project. Okay, so while that's drying, um, I'm going to work on making my paint color uh, 
like binder. I'm gonna use one of these little clips here that clips open. So what you do um, is you're gonna take your paint color. So you'll go to the paint store and get the color of a room. So this is my haul. And so on the back, I'm gonna write haul on it. So now I know what room it's in. And then I'm going to take my three, my hole punch, not my three hole punch. I'm gonna take that and I'm going to basically whatever corner, I wouldn't do it on the corner where the writing is. I do it on the other corner, but you just punch a hole in it. And then you do that to all of them. So I'll turn this down and y'all can watch me go through the steps and then I'll put them all paint chips on a binder, a ring clip, and I can keep this in my purse, and I can take it with me when I go to stores. Um, it'll help a lot when I'm matching uh, fabrics to rooms. This will help a lot when I'm matching like bedding, pillows, and all kinds of things. Okay, so... <laughs> My hour break turned into longer because I got on TikTok and I got distracted. And I don't know about you guys, but I really like TikTok. So let's get back to work. All right, let me pull this down. Oh no, it's stuck. <laughs> okay, well, well, oh, it came right off, no problem. All right, so um, now we're gonna put some spackle on this, but I wanted to show you first my inspiration. So I found the, these um, urns, vases, whatever you want to call them, on Ballard Design. I'll put a link in the description to Ballard, but um, I really thought they were beautiful. And so I just kind of looked at it and it definitely had that kind of white German schmear look on the outside, which in my last video, um, I did a technique with spackle or joint compound. And so that's what we're gonna put on this. So you need a sponge and some joint joint compound to do this. Okay, so I've got a little bit of spackle here. <laughs> I'm just throwing stuff everywhere. Um, so I use like these little jumbo popsicle sticks, but um, you're just gonna take and apply some spackle. And then take your sponge and just kind of move it around with the sponge. And give it some texture. I'm not holding this up very good where you can see it. Okay. I definitely want to add some more. I, I looked at it overnight and I just felt like I wanted more white. So I'm going to add some more and we'll watch that on the video here. Okay, so I've got everything done and you're going to laugh because... <laughs> I ended up putting the pot on the table. I just 
Love the simplicity of it by itself. So I put it on my dining room table and I ended up putting my old uh, dough bowl that I found at a thrift shop back on the entryway table because I'm planning on doing something for spring really soon and that's going to change anyway. So here it is, all finished and all put together. helpful and I hope you are having a wonderful day. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. Again, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Bye!